Hey guys, what's up? What do you think is going to be the next biggest fantasy hit? Like Game of Thrones big, or like Lord of the Rings big, or Harry Potter big, or Star Wars big, or something like huge. What's the next biggest hit? Because like big hits is what made fantasy, you know, something. It, it made fantasy movies a reality. It made fantasy books a reality. We wouldn't have fantasy books. We wouldn't have fantasy movies today if it wasn't for the hits of the past in that genre. There's plenty of genres out there that have never really gotten their big hits, like cyberpunk hasn't had a huge hit. Um, you know, yeah, Blade Runner, uh, maybe, maybe Blade Runner, uh, maybe, you know, like a, f a few like cyberpunk sort of like, but there weren't really that many. And because there was no really, really big cyberpunk hit, there's not a lot of you know, studios and film studios or, or book publishers just publishing and making cyberpunk stuff. Or even though it's, it's great stuff, there's not a lot of it. It's a cyberpunk is like a small subgenre, um, like urban fantasy that really hasn't been a huge urban fantasy hit. You could say John Constantine, you know, Hellblazer was a was a urban fantasy hit. But aside from the Keanu Reeves movie and all the comic books. There really hasn't been a lot more. I mean, yeah, there was like Buffy the Vampire Slayer and there was like Chilling the Adventures of Sabrina and all that kind of stuff. You know, th there was some stuff, but it wasn't like, you know, when you, when you say John Constantine, most people don't know what it is. Even, th even though it was a Keanu Reeves movie. You know, when you say urban fantasy, a lot of people don't know what that genre is. You know, when you say science fiction, they're like, oh, Star Wars, right? When you say fantasy, they're like, oh, uh, Conan the Barbarian or something like that, right? Oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movies or whatever. You know, but they're not really going to think, you know, okay, you know, your average person that like casual consumer of fantasy movies, you know, is, is not really going to like think cyberpunk. Like a lot of people don't even know what that is. That you, if you say cyberpunk, they're not going to know what it is, even though it's like a genre of movies. And there's a lot of them now. There's a lot of cyberpunk inspired movies like on streaming, on Netflix and things like that. None of them have been, have been a really, really big hit. And so based on the, the hits that we've had in the past, what do you think is going to be the next biggest hit? Whether that's a video game, whether that's a movie, a book, or a comic book, or manga, or an anime, or animated feature, it doesn't really matter what's, what's going to be a great fantasy hit. Like for one thing, I really do think in, in the future, we're going to get a really good animated fantasy hit because a lot of people... I think want to make animated movies. I mean, if you look at anime, there's a lot of people making sci-fi and, and fantasy anime movies. I just think it's a matter of time before Western audiences and Western creators start making that kind of thing. And what's great about an animated movies is that they're, they're cheaper to make. Um, you can basically make a fantasy animated movie very, very easily. It's just art someone has to draw it animate it and produce it you know put the music in there and everything like that and for that to become a really big animated hit i mean it, you don't have to pay you know expensive actors to play in it right you will maybe pay uh, voiceover actors you, you maybe pay maybe uh pay an animated an um animation studio to, to animate it and stuff like that right but it's not going to be as expensive as making like Dune the movie of, you know, the, the, the old 1980s movie Dune, which was like millions and millions of dollars, right? You can make something a lot cheaper, sort of like the Beowulf movie, which was made with computer generated animation. And that's the thing about like fantasy movies. Like I think the next big hit is going to use a lot of computer generated animation. Um, and it might even use artists who are not like movie artists. They're just fantasy artists. I would love to see Boris Vallejo, uh, Louis Royo, Michael Whalen, you know, these fantasy artists who have done great fantasy work. They did a lot of like, you know, like basically like, like movie posters. They did like, you know, comic book covers. They did like book, book covers and things like that. And just posters and fine art calendars and things like that of just a lot of like really cool um, fantasy, very, very inspiring fantasy art. And when you look at that art, you could be like, wow, that would be such a cool movie. If I could just see those characters in a movie playing out, 
you know, some kind of story, that would be really cool. I mean, they're nice in like a framed piece of art, but it'd be also nice to see a movie. Like, what is that about? You know, that dragon that's in that piece, I want to see it in the movie, right? Or that, that person, that woman, or that, that dude who's a hero is like swinging the sword. Like, okay, what, what, you know, I'd love to see a movie with that, right? Like, they've done that before. They've, they've taken um, just ideas and visions and turned them into movies. So, but I think after movies like Lord of the Rings and movies like, you know, or series like Game of Thrones, I think a lot of people in Hollywood and movie makers have realized that like, yeah, fantasy could be a big thing. You know, um, you look at something like uh, Star Wars with uh, George Lucas. I mean, George Lucas just stopped doing Star Wars. He just ended it. He was like, that's it. I think he stopped doing that after, after probably like the low, the fact that like a lot of uh, people didn't like the prequels. And I honestly think the prequels of Star Wars was a bad idea. Basically, because what you're doing is you're just telling, you're just giving people information rather than creating a new story for people to follow. Because the thing about the prequels is we knew where the prequels were going. We knew what, how they were going to end and where they were going to go. I think like one, one movie as a prequel would have been cool. But I think even better than that, you should have just made a continuation of the Star Wars series. Just like... Why did nothing ever happen after Return of the Jedi, right? Uh, why not? Why couldn't there be a Star Wars, what was it, like, 4, 5, and 6? A Star Wars, like, you know, a next Star Wars and something like that, a continuation of that story. I think one of the reasons was that, you know, um, a lot of the actors just, maybe they just didn't want to do it anymore, but they were still around. They're still around now, you know? Um, not all of them. Some of them are, are, are not around. But the thing about it is that, it would have been cooler making just Star Wars movies and then just filling in the past with like scenes instead of actual whole movies. You know, you didn't need three movies to make, to make a prequel. It, it was cool. Like I enjoyed that they did that. And I enjoyed that, um, you know, that they told the story of how it, you know, Star Wars started and came to be. But I think also is those prequels ruined Star Wars for Hollywood, they did, they weren't as successful when when Hollywood was like, "Hey, we're going to do another Star Wars." They thought it was this thing was going to be huge. They thought that it was going to be another multi you know million dollar like movie. It's going to make money, and when it didn't do that, and people just casually liked it, and a lot of people hated it. A lot of Star Wars fans who loved Star Wars didn't love Star Wars anymore after watching the prequels, and so. Um, you know, and, and, and so it was just a low, the, the way they didn't bring in any money that the people were just like, forget Star Wars. You know, we're just not going to make any more. And if we are going to make more, which which they did, we're not really going to try that hard. We're not going to really care. We're not going to put everything into it. Sort of like what I feel they did with um, um, Mad Max, right? Um, I, 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 I saw, you know, the, the previous, some of the, the older Bat Mad Max movies, and I just think it's... Basically, it was, it was just pretty much more of the same. It was just Mad Max, you know, and the continuation of it. I think they're definitely going to make more Mad Max movies, and I think they're definitely going to be hits, you know. But I, I do think that, like, there's really, like, you know, how, what can you do with Mad Max? You know, that you're in a desert. It's post-apocalypse. Um, everyone is pretty much fighting for food and gasoline, any kind of, like, machinery they can find, any kind of technology. Um, people are getting together to build cities and, uh, everything is like post nuclear war or post some kind of apocalypse or whatever it is. It's just the same thing. It's just like Mad Max, Mad Max. It's like, okay, you're driving through a desert and there's these like diesel punks everywhere and they're trying to, you know, it's just cars and, you know, people shooting at each other. It's just like, you know, basically Mad Max um, Fury Road or whatever it was was the same Mad Max pretty much as Beyond Thunderdome, right? It was just the same freaking movie. It was the same ideas. It was the same artwork. It was the same everything. So certain things they're just going to run out of. They're just going to be like, okay, we can't make any more of these movies because um, we have nowhere to go with it. Just the whole apocalypse, like the the whole like sci-fi apocalypse kind of movie. Whereas like 
they really have nowhere to go with it. It's sort of like any like post-apocalypse sci-fi movie that you watch is very, very like Mad Max. It's that, that thing. It's the same as that. And they haven't really gone anywhere with it because there's nowhere to go. That's the little, you know, that's a sort of like sandbox that they're playing in. And there's nothing really much in that universe. Everything's destroyed. It's just cars and desert and gasoline and punks fighting each other, you know? It's like, and that's going to be Mad Max in the future. That they, there's just, there's no new version of it. For example, the Alien movies, right? The Aliens, like, where, where are they going to go with that? It's just more of the same thing, you know? It's just aliens and just, like, they're bugs and they're big bugs and they spit acid and... Um, they're, in, you know, they, they it, it, and it's a spaceship and they're like infiltrating the spaceship and it's just like, again, you know? So I do think that like, those are not, not going to be big hits. They're going to be making them because there are, there are people that want to watch them. There are people that if they make another Godzilla movie, um, they, there are people that are going to watch that Godzilla movie, no matter how good or bad it is. For example, like there was a movie like years back, over 10 years back, there was one called um, some like uh, Pacific Pacific Coast or something. It was it was something. It was it was some movie where um, it was it was sort of like a Godzilla movie, but it was just uh, off the coast of the like in the Pacific. There was like these monsters coming out of the water. <sighs> it's Pacific Coast or something, like whatever it was, and um, there were like people in mech suits trying to fight them you know, stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, a lot of people just thought there was nothing to that, but a lot of people are like, oh, it's a Godzilla movie. It's, it's, it's a sort of like Godzilla movie. You know, if they make a King Kong movie, people are going to see it because King Kong is just a very, very popular movie and people like King Kong and things like that, right? Even if they make Star Wars, you know, is it going to be a big hit? I don't see that happening. Like, I don't really see another Star Wars becoming a big hit because the reasons that Star Wars, the three movies, were such a big hit is not the same thing as they're making now. Be, they were a big hit because they were original. They were well made. Um, there was a high budget to it. And most sci-fi movies at the time and fantasy movies at the time didn't have a big budget. They didn't have a, like, like a, um, a huge budget. A lot of them were very, very, like, B-movie. A lot of them were, like, you know, very, very, you know... They didn't have a lot of money to make those movies. The special effects were crap, right? But when you had Star Wars, they had a really big budget. The spaceships looked good. I mean, the 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 the, the fighting in space looked pretty cool. And the thing is, is that like there wasn't a lot of other movies being made about space stations being blown up, uh, evil dictators wearing these like plastic masks and capes and you know, fighting with light swords. All of these were like brand new. No one's ever seen anything like it, right? The story was cool. The actors were good actors that no one knew anything about. Like Harrison Ford, no one knew who Harrison Ford was at the time. And he was just a really good actor that they found. They're like, okay, this, this is definitely the actor. I think what they did with Star Wars is they really found the actors that were perfect for the roles. The writing was great for the roles. The score, the music was great. The story was good. And the universe was already well thought out before the story we even happened. And I think starting um, Star Wars with episode four was a great idea because you didn't have to start it at episode one. Episode four is when things got interesting. And they, st if you remember like the first Star Wars, it was like they didn't know the past. They had to figure out the past. Like, who are these people? Where's everything going? And it was all figured out. Like Star Wars was figured out before the movies was made. The universe was already figured out. No other space movie at the time was like that. We didn't have anything like that. It was original. And the thing about making Star Wars now is that George Lucas isn't doing it. Disney's doing it. Disney makes Mickey Mouse. I mean, can you imagine if like George Lucas did Mickey Mouse? Like he wouldn't, he wouldn't make it look like you know George Lucas's Mickey Mouse would have a lightsaber and be like Luke Skywalker, right? Um, and so those are the things that is, you know, it's, we're not going to have a big movie if we're going to be doing more of the same, right? If they're going to just keep on continuing stuff that they think is going to work. And I, I, I don't know when, and I'm sure some, somewhere along the way, they're going to realize that sequels don't work. 
at all unless unless the big the first movie was a huge hit like a big hit a sequel will not work and even if the first movie was a huge hit there's no guarantee that a sequel is going to be a huge hit star wars as good as those movies were there were three of them those three sequels were good you know the, those first movie and the two sequels were good but every sequel after it it was just a sequel it was like how can we keep making these things that are making us money you know, because people, when people make movies, they're like, I have this great idea. I'm going to do this. And then it's like, it makes a bunch of money. And they're like, I had this great idea and I did it. And now I have millions of dollars. And now I want to, and I think I can come up with something that's going to make me more money. You know what I mean? Because like, once they have that much money, they're like, do they really still want to make a movie? Or how many ideas that they have that they haven't put in their first movie? Usually when someone has an idea, it's a conglomeration of ideas. It's a whole lot of ideas that people are just putting out there um, and into the first movie. So when Lucas made Star Wars, he put all of his ideas into, into Star Wars, into the first three movies that they he, he figured those out. And he put all of, his, all of his ideas in those three movies. And the thing is that like, there were no more ideas. Those were his ideas. That was it. I mean, there's going to, uh, ideas are finite, right? Um, for example, like, you know, it's like Lord of the Rings. It's already been done and that's it. And to make a continuation of it, like, what was it? The, there was another, um, the Rings of Power. It was not Lord of the Rings anymore. I thought Rings of Power was, I saw season one. I thought it was good. I thought it was good. I didn't think it was, it was like a great, exciting story or whatever i just thought it was well made and i thought it was like very beautifully done i thought that the 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 art styles and the acting and the scenes and the way everything i thought that the movies looked really good they're like really beautiful and everything was really really nice was the story great or whatever um well you know i didn't expect it to be amazing it was just a continuation of lord of the rings they're just trying to continue it but they're doing it without the original author having anything to do with it. So it's other people doing something that they didn't write to begin with, right? Um, with the Rings of Power, and I, th I thought it was good, and you could do Rings of Power that are great. Like, for example, even something like Conan the Barbarian, they had a great movie, and then that was it. But the thing about the, some of the movies, like the Terminator, there was good, good sequels. But then after the sequels started becoming bad, they stopped making them. Same thing with The Matrix. It's like, yeah, there were a couple of good sequels with The Matrix, and then that was it. Probably because they ran out of ideas. You know, probably because what can you do with The Matrix? It was like the whole idea was already done, and to make a sequel means basically creating another story in the same universe, but you've got to fit the story to the universe. It's just like, you know, it's just all these people that, like, do they really want to make a sequel? Do they really want to continue do we really love that story do they really love that story enough to continue that story do they really like want to continue that story and that's the thing about like um sequels with something like star 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 wars like um it's got to be people that are big star wars fans to make another star wars and have it really successful because um you know like if someone just isn't a Star Wars fan, they're not into the story, they're not going to make a great movie out of it. You know, like the guy that made Conan the Barbarian in 1980s with Schwarzenegger, he was a big fan of Conan the Barbarian, you know? And a lot of the people, the people that wrote the, the screenplay and everything, like they were they were fans of that franchise. You know, so I think that somewhere along the way, Hollywood's going to realize that sequels and things that have already been done uh, don't work a second time. Lightning only strikes once in one place, and then it's got to strike somewhere else. You know, it's not going to keep striking the same tree, right? It strikes once, and that's it, right? Usually, I, I'm, I'm sure, like, every once in a while, st lightning strikes twice or a few times in one spot, maybe. Who knows, you know, whether lightning does that or not, right? They say it doesn't, but who knows, right? Um... But it's rare, right? Usually lightning just strikes randomly. And that's that's what I feel like is with big hits and big fantasy hits. Is they're, they're just random. They come out of nowhere. It's like movies come out, movies come out, and you don't even hear about the movies coming out now because people don't really go to movies anymore. I mean, they do. But basically, they, they watch things that are like on streaming. They watch like Netflix and things like that, right? 
And every once in a while, you'd be like, oh, I, I've been hearing about this movie or this series or something like that. It's supposed to be really good. You know, just every once in a while, it comes out of nowhere, like Stranger Things, like came out of nowhere, you know? Um, and all of a sudden, it's like, oh, it's really good. And the thing about Stranger Things is like, the sequels, like the seasons, the continuing seasons are actually good. And that that's, I feel like that's a weird thing in movies and fantasy movies and stuff like that. But whereas like, you know, sequels to movies are never good, but seasons in series are always really good. A lot of the time, the second season and the third season are like just as good or better than the first season. You know, and I think the reason is, is that when someone makes a series, uh, they plan on this story going on a very, very long time. So they figure out a very, very long story. And in the first season, they don't tell all the story because they plan on multiple seasons. They plan on this story going on for a while. Whereas like when someone makes a movie, they plan on that movie for being there for two hours and that movie being over after two hours. The story's short, right? And that's why, like, uh, all of a sudden they're like, oh, but that, that, you know, a lot of people like that movie, right? And now it's like, oh, now I got to think up another, a sequel to that movie because it was successful and people want a sequel and, it, you know, because they like the first one. Whereas, like, with series, they realize that, like, well, series, this, this can go on for, like, 10 seasons. We can just go on for 20 seasons. We don't know how long it's going to go on. So let's just start doing it and getting into the story and a lot of it has to do with like the drama and everything else, the story just playing out. And, you know, and, and, and additional seasons to a, a, a series, the story can change a lot. The characters can change, some, some get introduced, some leave or die off or they kill them off or whatever. The, the villains can be different, the monsters can be different, the whole story can be different. Things can change and evolve over time um, because you know, they're, they're looking at like when someone sets out to do a series, th they plan on a long story that can just keep going on. It's let's figure something out that we can just keep adding to, you know, whereas like movies, it's like, oh, let's figure out a two hour thing that's going to end uh, with some kind of ending or the, the main character is going to either like walk into the sunset or they're going to be they're killed off or something, you know, it begins and ends after like two hours, whereas like a series just keeps going, you know? So I, I do think that like the next big thing is, you know, in series is going to be uh, something that is going to be like, yeah, they're going to have movies, but like, I honestly, like I prefer a series. And the reason is that when the series isn't good, you know, you, you just kind of like get, lose interest in it after a few episodes and you turn it off and watch something else. When a movie isn't good, you know, when, but, when a, but when a movie is good, it's over after two hours. And you're like, man, that was such a short movie. I wish this movie, you know, kept going, right? Whereas, like, if you ever, like, tune into a cool series that's, like, already has ten seasons in it or eight seasons or whatever it is, right? And you start watching, you're like, oh, this is cool. And you like the first season. And you're like, oh, this is great. I love the first season. I'm going to watch, like, eight more seasons of this because there's just so much content there. It's the same reason why people will love reading books that are like a series, like the Xanth books from Piers Anthony. There's like over 30 books or something in the Xanth series. I think he started writing Xanth in what, the 70s or 80s or something like that years ago. And people are still reading Xanth and he's still writing Xanth, right? And people love that series and they just keep on reading it and reading it. I think with Game of Thrones was the same thing. The guy... Um, George R. R. Martin, he just started like writing this. It, it, it was, it's a series. It's a long thing. You know, it's not just one book. Um, and, and so series is definitely long stories are going to be like the biggest things. They're going to be the kids because I think when it's good, you can actually sit down and, you know, if it's not good, they're going to stop doing it after a series, a, se a se season or two. Right. But when it's good, they're going to keep going with it and they're just going to keep making them. And I really hate when they end series. When they, when they have this good series and they end it for no reason, I have no idea why, why they're ending it. It's just, it's making them money, right? They've got like, you know, they're, uh, do they get tired of acting and directing it and writing it? Maybe, right? But after like four years or six or eight years of doing it, maybe they get tired of it or something like that, you know? But 
really a lot of people would love that because it's just the, you know, the job is the same, you know, it's like, it just can, you know, you always have work, right? You always like keep making more of this series. Well, why not keep making it? Well, you know, unless you get tired of and you want to act in a different movie or a different series or whatever it is, right? Um, so I think there's that. And I also think that like the biggest hits, they're going to come from other people's ideas, right? For example, like there's a lot of untapped potential. There's a lot of like movies that have not been made yet great stories that have been made up that have not been made yet, right? And movies, people love making movies and series out of stories and things that other people have already made. Look at video games. Look at something like Elden Ring or um, the Zelda, right? The Legend of Zelda or something like that. There's a lot of great stories in um, video games where you know, in the Dark Souls stories. And there's a lot of great stories, a lot of great like art and ideas and stories and and a lot of things in video games that they can make great movies out of because it's very, very cinematic. It works with movies because a lot of action there, a lot of story there, a lot of interesting things happening there. Um, same thing with like anime and same thing with like manga. Whereas like there's a lot of great ideas, a lot of people writing great stories in manga and anime. And a lot of people really making, having great ideas. And I think the great, the next big thing is going to be either something that someone already wrote or something that someone just figured out. But I think the thing about it is that there's an entry point to putting your ideas out there and having an original idea and going to Hollywood and saying, I've got this idea for a, a movie or a series or whatever. And I think it's going to be the next biggest thing. Hollywood's going to be like, well, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. I don't know, right? But if somebody goes ahead and draws a manga or makes a comic book or something on a smaller scale or writes a short story or a novel or something like that and does something on a smaller scale and it's successful and people like it and they think it's a good idea and it's a good movie and it's a, well, it's a good story. And now, now at that point, they're going to say, well, I wrote this book or I want to make this movie based on this book. Well, you know, how successful is the book? Well, it's a really, really good book and a lot of people praise it. And that's the thing about it. It doesn't have to be like a book that sold a million copies. It just has to be a book that a lot of people thought that was a good story. Like people read it and they thought that was a good story. Well, that was a book or a comic book or a movie or like, well, or like a manga or like a video game or something like that. You know, it's like, well, a lot of people liked it. A lot of people thought, you know, they gave it rave reviews. They, they thought it was like, oh, this is a great idea, you know, and let's make a movie out of it and something like that. So I think it's good. They're looking for originality. They're looking for something new because I think they, they know and they realize that like people don't want to see the same thing anymore because there's so much of it. There's so much of. Um, something that's already been done, that's being done again and again and again. And this is the thing with science fiction movies a lot. You're going to see the same scenes and the same ideas and the same kind of situations in science fiction movies and fantasy movies as you've seen in the past, right? Something that's already happened. Something that, okay, we've done Sword and the Sorcerer. We've done Dragon Slayer. We've, you know, we've done Magic Swords and we've done all this stuff. We want something new. And I think that's why Avatar the movie was so great. No one's done Avatar the movie. It's a, it, was, it was a different take on a science fiction movie. It was something new. It was something good, you know? And so, like, and, and, and it was just well written and well done. And if you look at some of the big guys making making fantasy movies, like the big, you know, Quentin Tarantino and these guys making these big movies... They're not, they haven't made a great fantasy movie in a very, very long time. You know, when was the, what was the last great fantasy movie that, that came out? Was it Lord of the Rings? Well, that came out a while ago, right? Or was it like Avatar? Well, that came out a while ago too. You know, I, I couldn't think of anything like recently. And I think maybe it's because they're like, well, movies, nobody wants to go to movies anymore, right? We, why don't we just make series? Why don't we just do something for streaming? We'll, we'll do something for uh, Amazon Prime or like Netflix or like, you know, whatever, you know, whatever streaming thing it is. Let's do something like that because that's what people are doing. People are sitting home and they're watching Amazon Prime and Netflix. 
you know, yeah, people are going to theaters, but probably not as much as they used to be just because of the way streaming is and just because of the way that's happening. So like these people are just, they're just like, well, should we make a movie? Are people going to watch a movie or are people just going to like, you know, want to watch Netflix? What they're going to want to want to sit at home and watch a streaming you know, show or something like that. So I definitely think some of the better stuff is going to come in streaming because that's where everyone's going. And I think it's fine. I mean, it's just like streaming is cool. It's just, there's not a lot of options in streaming. You know, there's just, a, you know, there is what there is. You could, the only thing about streaming that's different than what they had before with like, you know, TV or cable TV is that you can, it's pretty much whatever was, you know, whatever on TV. The only thing is it's not on at a certain time or a certain day. It's just whenever you want to watch it and, you know, you can kind of pause it and watch some some of it and watch the rest of it later, right? So that's the only thing about streaming. It's it's the same thing as we had before. It's just a lot more flexible as to like, you know, when you want to watch it, right? It's sort of like, you know, you don't have to tune into a certain time to see your TV show. You just like can pretty much watch it whenever you want. That's the only difference between streaming and TV that we had before streaming. You know, movies are still the big screen with, you know, big screens and, you know, nice Dolby surround sound and stuff like that. You know, so that's a thing. And I think that, like, you know, it's, you know, it, maybe there'll be movies, but I, I, I still think that, like, people prefer uh, series than movies. And that's why they're just making them, you know, movies are great, but they're only like two hours long and series are great and they're really long and you can just continue them. And what I like about series is a lot of the time is that like, um, it just keeps going. The story just, just keeps, you know, j just keeps telling and telling and telling. So that's the thing about it. So let me know what you guys are thinking about this kind of thing. What, what do you think is going to be the next big future, fantasy feature thing uh, in the comments. And thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like and a subscribe, and I will see you guys in another video. Later. Take care.